For this lesson, we'll go through an example on using the double integral for polar coordinates to find a certain area of the region R. Now, um, you know, polar coordinates can really give us some nice shape, some simple equation like 1 minus cosine theta or sine squared theta can give us a, lot, a nice shape. So, you know, this problem may apply for those that, you know, are uh, dealing with geometrical modeling or those that are really like art, okay? I don't know, maybe girls like art more than guys, okay? But whatever it is, we are concerned with more of the mathematics. Alright, the problem is that we want to find the area enclosed by the three petal rows r equals to sine 3 theta. Okay, a function as innocent looking as this can really give us some nice shapes, you know, such as the rows over here, like so. Uh, we want to find the area enclosed by the three petal rows. So let's just go with first things first. When we want to find the area, what's going to be our function r of theta? Well, it can only be one um, value, okay? Our function of r in terms of theta is equal to 1. Um, we define the region R, so in this case, uh, the region R is basically this row over here and we multiply by unit height, we will get the area. So remember, for area, just set um, R, um, sorry, function of R is equals to 1. So what's our double integral? Our double integral is simply double integral of uh, 1 um, d, sorry, 1 dA, okay? And then after that, obviously, we want to translate that to the iterative integral or move that to the iterative integral and this is where our problem is going to lie. Alright, now, we know that the dA goes into r d r d theta, okay, we, we know there's no surprise about that. The problem of this question is finding the limits of r and of theta, and if we're not careful with polar coordinates, this is where many of us will stumble and obviously we'll get a wrong answer. Alright, so how are we going to approach this problem? Well, I would like to point out some common mistakes, okay, now I know that this is a nice shape, but what that I did not mention when I graph out these three pair rows is that what is the range of values of theta? See, we don't know. What is the range of values of theta? We don't know. It's not contained in this graph, okay? That's something that, you know, you want to keep mindful of when you're dealing with polar coordinates. But nonetheless, we can still solve the problem. Hey, now mistake number one. Um, as far as the limits for theta is concerned, many of us will run theta from zero, which is quite obvious, okay, which is basically um, alpha equals zero over here, and theta equals to two pi. Okay, now, is there a problem with that? Well, I wouldn't blame you if you want to put the limits as that because, um, well, essentially, the, the graph, you know, covers the whole range, right? From the, uh, alpha equals zero all the way to beta equals to two pi or theta equals to two pi. But this answer is not exactly correct. In fact, it's not correct at all because we don't know how much times the pedal will, you know, um, graph itself out, you know, for whatever values of theta. For what do I mean by that? Well, basically, for all we know, uh, from theta equals 0 to theta equals to 2 pi, you know, the, the pedal could have easily come out, okay? And also, um, from theta to 0 and theta equals to maybe 4 pi, the pedal could also come out. Well, um, why is that? Well, basically, uh, you will, I'll make it more clear later on. Uh, because, you see, when we go for a certain cycle, right, a cycle could mean this, 1, 2, and it stops here. And that cycle could correspond to theta uh, equals from 0 to 2 pi. So, for example, 0 equals to 2 pi, the range of values of theta could actually mean this, okay? And then we have missed out this uh, pattern. So, so we don't know. Basically, uh, we can't see from the polar graph what are the range of values of theta. Many of you who are geometrically sound may know what it is immediately. Okay, doesn't matter. Now, a way around this problem is that we can define our region R as one petal like so, okay? So basically, let's just take for now that this uh, petal is our region R. Now, by symmetry, we can multiply that area by 3 and get, you know, the area of the rows. But this is the mistake number 2. Now, it looks as though that this petal is in the first quadrant. So what we do is that alpha equals to 0 or theta runs from 0 to beta equals 2 pi divided by 2, okay? Uh, where's pi divided by 2? Pi divided by 2 is over here. So, you know, it seems rather obvious that since the pattern is in the first quadrant, we are running the angles from 0 to pi divided by 2. Now, may I say again that this is actually wrong? Okay, now I say again this is actually wrong because for all we know, again, we put pi uh, divided by 2 inside the, the function over here, r could give us another value which is basically not 0. It could mean that r is actually from 0 to here. So by the time reach uh, theta uh, divided by 2, the r could have already been over here, okay? Or uh, theta divided by 2, the r could be somewhere like over here like that. Because remember, r always takes a positive value, okay? Uh, sorry, r, take, r can take a negative value. So if r takes a negative value, basically we are going uh, in the opposite direction. So, you know, we don't know. But how can we get around this problem? Okay, this is how we solve a problem like this. I will show you the problems and now we'll go through the solution. Now, what I can do is that even though I may not know, um, you know, how the, the polar graph looks like, I can graph out this function, okay, in terms of theta, 
okay, and R on the normal X and Y axis, okay, on the normal X and Y axis. Try to move from the X and Y um, interpretation of the rows to the polar coordinate version. Okay, now, theta, uh, sine and two, 2 theta, right? So maybe that one is a bit of a confusion, but what we know about a sine graph that goes from 0 to 2 pi, well, it's going to be like this, all right? Um, this is going to be pi. Okay, but this is uh, 3 theta, okay? So this is R equals to sine 3 theta. Now remember, this is the radius, right? So um, it's not the same as this. Basically, this just gives us the radius, and from here we can, you know, elicit the information from the polar graph. So if I get 3 uh, theta, it's basically, I'm gonna, you know, kind of like, um, the, the graph is gonna repeat itself. The period of the graph is going to be uh, one third. It's gonna be multiplied by one third, right? Yeah, that's what it means. So what it looks like, it now looks like this. 1, 2, 3, and it'll go 1, 2, 3. Okay, so this is r equals to sine 3 theta. Now, this graph is very important because this tells us when the radius is equal to 0. How is that information useful for us? Well, we know that when the radius equals to 0, basically the polar graph would meet back at this point over here, which is, well, let's call it 0, 0. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, because when the radius is zero, if the polar graph is over there, there is no radius. When the radius is over here, the radius is maybe, let's just say, I think it should be one, right? But, you know, if we know that it comes back here when the radius equals to zero. So, what can we say? We can say that it would first uh, start at zero, but that's trivial, okay? And the next time when it reaches zero, it's basically pi divided by three, okay? I hope you can see that. Remember when I said that the, the period um, is times by one third divided by three? Well, basically, that's what we're doing, pi divided by three. So, by looking at this graph, it first starts as r equals to zero. The next time when r is equal to zero is when theta is equal to pi divided by three. How do we translate that information over there? Very easy. What it means is that, this line, okay, line segment that I'll draw over here like this, okay, that contains the pedal, the, the one pedal or the first quadrant, this is actually theta equals to pi divided by 3. Now, try to convince yourself in that, okay, so you see, as you can see, um, the, 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 the radius is going to increase, increase, and it's going to decrease again, and then it's going to go back to 0 at pi divided by 3. So at these two um, rays, okay, it's going to increase, increase, increase following the graph, and then later it's going to decrease and it'll go back to r equals to 0 like so over here. This angle is pi divided by 3. Next, from pi divided by 3 to uh, 2 pi divided by 3. So basically what's 2 pi divided by 3? Let's graph it out over here. Theta equals to 2 pi divided by 3. And then you're like, oh my goodness, why isn't the panel over there? Well, easy explanation because from our uh, graph over here, we see that the, the radius okay, is going to be a negative value. That is why, as you can see, it's going down. It's a negative value. Now, there's some confusion which I'll clear up by the end of the lesson, but you know, you will see why in a minute. So basically, this is just telling us that we can move from here to here. And then later, we're from 2 pi divided by 3 to theta divided by pi, sorry, theta equals to pi, that finish up the last panel like so over there. Now, so what was the first problem? The first problem now, in fact, from theta equals to 0 from, uh, to theta equals to pi, okay, we'll graph out the panel. Okay, but if we are concerned in finding this uh, one over here, it's basically from theta equals to 0 to theta equals to pi divided by 3. And that is all we have to it. Right, so now moving back inside here, so now we can write what's the, the uh, limits in terms of the angle is concerned. Well, our region R is defined as the panel, the panel in the top quadrant, so this is uh, basically 0 to pi divided by 3. Okay, like I said again, when pi divided by 3, the, the, the pedal goes, I mean the radius equals 0, so that's what the pedal that we have. Okay, so again now, so what is our, our R1, R2? Well, this is going to be R1 is equals to, uh, R2 in terms, R1 in terms of theta is equals to 0. R2 is going to be equals to sine divided by 3 pi, uh, sorry, sine times uh, sine of 3 theta. Okay, so that goes over here like that. And then our area, uh, our function is 1, okay, but remember dA. It goes to, when we move into the Ayrton integral, r d r d theta. Never forget the r. The r is always there. Okay, so we evaluate this. Okay, 0, um, 2 pi. Uh, sorry, pi divided by 3. What we have over here, we have half r squared. And then we're going to put in the limits of 0 and sine 3 theta. And then we're going to evaluate that uh, in terms of theta. Okay, we'll get pi divided by 3. And uh, let me just have a quick check. It'll be 1 takeaway. Sorry, half, 1 take away cosine uh, 6 theta, okay, 6 theta, just using some um, trigonometry identities, okay, uh, and then basically when we do that, we have the answer as um, 1 over 12 pi, 
Okay, but this is the area for the one over there. So what we have to do is that we need times it by three. So essentially, the area is going to be equals to pi divided by four. Okay, and that is how you solve this problem. Uh, making sure that you have the limits. As we have seen over here, the limits is not from 0 to 2 pi. The limits is in fact from 0 to pi. But if you want to find the region R, okay, or find the double integral of region R, it's really 0 to pi divided by 3. How do we get this information? Graph it out in the X and Y um, coordinate system, or basically a Cartesian coordinate system, and match up when R is equal to 0. Okay, R will be equal to 0 when theta is equal to 0, pi divided, by, uh, pi divided by 3, 2 pi divided by 3, and pi. That is correct, 0. Pi divided by 3, uh, 2 pi comes back here, and then pi comes back there.